my lovely ravens welcome back to my channel my name is Chantel and today I want to share a little bit of a personal project with you so I want to document all the funny things my daughter says she's nearly four she's four this month and uh, the month of May and I want to make some memories in a little scrapbook well little it's, it's kind of big but I'm just not happy with how it turned out so what I want to do is paint the cover and um, some of you might like this actually but um, yeah it just didn't turn out the way I wanted it to because the inside's kind of it, it looks kind of odd to me I mean it has some pops of color but it's still it's still kind of muted and I'm just not sure about the cover so I want to change that so I can paint it in a recent community post I asked you what else you guys would like to see and some or challenges you would like to see and someone commented that they would like to see like a, a pop out forest kind of thing so it's like a, a circle or a square and out of it comes a forest kind of thing uh, outgrows a forest something like that so I thought maybe I can transform this journal into something like that so um, I think we're just gonna do that I will make an overlay with a circle in it and out of that circle will be stuff growing and then I will paint the entire thing so I made the signatures it's not bound yet so that's why I can still do something with the cover um, but yeah it's, it's just not the way I wanted it to be for the cover so we're just gonna change that up and um, it's okay it's okay to change things up if you're not happy with it you don't have to toss it out but let's just make this work all right so first of all I need to take out all of these signatures so let's do that first Okay, we have a blank slate now. So I put the signatures in this box and everything that I want to use for personal journals. And now I probably just want to cut off those excess strands because we don't need them anymore. I mean, they're pretty and all, but we don't want them to be painted. I'm kind of happy with the inside here. So I'm going to leave this, that as is. I'm also kind of happy with the back here so I'm probably gonna leave that as is as well I just want to get rid of that fabric so that's what I'm going to focus on of course we will get rid of most of that fabric when I cover it up with that front cover but the back cover will be just painted so I'm wondering if I would be filling in this journal with my daughter's stuff would you be interested in seeing page layouts and how I journal in a journal? Um, you might not, and people might not be interested in that at all. But if some of you say that you are, then I might just do a video on it every time I journal in that and make that into a little series of some sort. Okay, I think we are done with most of those strands. Okay, so journal cover. This was just a cereal box and I've covered it with fabric. That's as easy as it is. So it was a large cereal box. I folded these flaps here and then sewed them on the inside, sewed them here as well. So I've got one, two, three, four pockets. And that's basically what it is. So if I want to cover that up, this front part needs to be 145 145 centimeters or just over five and a half, five and three quarter inch but let's go with 40 45 centimeters by <clears throat> just want to stay inside 25 so 14 and a half by 25 keep that in mind <laughs> let's just write it down 14.5 by 25 
this piece of chipboard is from the back of a, um, I think it was coloring pages for kids, but it has the perfect thickness. So this is about um, three mil thick, three or four mil thick. So I'm going to cut that size out of this thing. So I've cut this thing and I've chomped the corners with my big, big punch. I got a big punch at a thrift store um, and I just had to order a punch for it, which <laughs> the punch itself is worth about a hundred dollars. It cost me $7 at the thrift store. It had the wrong punch with it, which cuts out a chunk like that. So a U shape instead of a, an oval outcut on the outside, uh, cause that's what I got it for. But I was able to order the other punch for about 50 bucks. So it, it cost me still 50 bucks, which is still half the price of what I would have paid anyway. Anyway, I was thinking of using it for prints and whatnot for um, corner punching corners. Cause it's cheaper than ordering with the corners jumped online. So we have this piece of cardboard. It's really sturdy. I'm gonna place that there. And you can see that it's just it just has a smidge of the other, of the actual journal on the outside. So it gives a nice corner. And then this is a um, punch out from a, um, from a die. And if I place that where I want it, I can also place it right smack bang in the middle, but I think I want it somewhere here. I think there would be good. I mean, I can try and put this through my cuddle bug or my big short shot. I mean, I don't think it will go through. I mean, I can try it. So um, let's give it a go, shall we? All right, so I have my die here and I'm just gonna secure it so it doesn't move where I want it. Let's see how this works. That won't cut through, but it will give me an impression so just rolling it through a few times. See, now I can just cut there with my X-Acto blade, which makes it a lot easier. Let's get rid of this thing. I actually have now a different idea for another journal cover, which is cutting out another hole from another um, piece of cardboard and making this as a hobbit door. How cool would that be? Just to have that door there that you can open and close it. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, I might actually do that for the, another cover. This is now my journal cover. So it is kind of easy to get stuff getting from behind there. So what you can do is if, if you have a nice image like this, you can print, you can put that in the background and just let that stuff come out. I won't use this because this is from my common room on my main channel. Um, but I need to come up with an image for here and it needs to be kind of magical. So um, I'm just gonna have a look what I can find. So I found a cute little image of a snail and I found it on Unsplash. Um, I think I just put in moss and I got this image. So I think that's really cute behind it. She loves snails. So um, I'm just gonna put that behind there. Before I do that, however, I'm going to paint this entire thing. And I'm, I think I'm going to go with a dark brown or a green even. Yeah, I might even go with a green, just a muted green, like the background here. And I'm going to cover this in Mod Podge just so it's protected. So covering that in Mod Podge and then covering that as well. I might actually go for a brown because the moss that will be outside coming outside of the frame and the um, leaves that will be coming outside of the frame will be green as well. So I'm probably gonna go with, um, yeah, or even the black and then putting in highlights with, uh, with brown, probably that. So yeah, doing that, let's go for it. I'm going to go two ways up and sideways, two layers with a coarse brush, like one of those brushes that you get for acrylic paints that no one, no one ever uses for acrylic paint. Two ways, because I want it to look like canvas. And 
And this is matte Mod Podge. So this part is done up and down, the streaks up and down. I don't think you can see it. Um, but now I'm going, I'm going to go left to right. So once it's dry, you can go over it again. And there we have the canvas snail. I'm just going to cut it out so it's ready for sticking behind the circle. There we go. Pretty happy with that. And it will sit flush against that, so that's all good. Now, I'm going to cover this whole thing first with paint because I don't want to get too close with paint to the snail. Although in the end, I probably need to do a little bit of touch up, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. I have some black here. It's matte acrylic paint, so I'm going to use this to cover the entire journal. So I said I wasn't going to do the spine, but I am going to paint that. Because it's just, it just ties it all in, you know. You yeah. know. So there's a black journal. Let's wait for that to dry. And then we can do the inside. We have our black journal and it's painted on the inside now as well and most of the edges. I'm so happy with how this is turning out. Like it's really turning out the way I want it to now. Anyway, anyhow, there's our snail. Goes behind like so. There's some detail of that sewing still, and it's still visible. And I, I love, love, love how this is turning out. So, um, let me see. What do I want to add to this? I might, with some brown paint, add some detail to the sides. So, I just might do, it's just with the same paint brush that I used for the black. I just wiped it off a little bit. It's coming on the side like that. Just wiping my paintbrush ever so slightly on the mat. Also go over all these stitches. I was light-handed, but I can I can be a bit more more aggressive with it, I suppose. Because I want to see it, you know, I don't want it to not show up. But I do love the grunge feel and look of this thing. It's just really love it. I might, I might do it more often. But obviously this one will not be for sale because I am purely making this for myself, for my daughter, for when she's older. And I can give that to her. But would you, would you buy something like this? Would you, if you would see this in my shop, would you, would you get it? I don't know. I have no clue. Just gonna dry this and then I will do the spine and all the patches. So this looks pretty grungy and almost, almost steampunky. Um, I want to brighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to add some greens and some um, lighter browns as well. So now I'm just basically placing my paintbrush in brown and green and then stippling it with this coarse paintbrush along the side. The same one I used 
as the one for the Mud Pudge. And I'm twisting and turning my paintbrush as I go, just to give it that random effect. I'm gonna go a step lighter, combining the light green with the dark green. I'm only gonna go lightly here because I don't want it to be like too much. So I'll just keep continuing this until I'm happy with what it looks like, and then I can move on to the actual journal and do similar a similar thing. Okay, I think I've done enough on the journal itself now, and uh, I think it's time to glue on the cover. And then um, after that, decorate it with leaves and stuff. Um, let's see where that snail needs to go. Okay, well I'll do, I'll put glue behind here and then lower down on the snail and then it should be exactly where I want it to be. Somewhere there for Mr. Snail. I'm gonna fire up my heat gun. No, my glue gun. Because um, I want this to stick immediately. So the inside I'm going to attach with Fabri-Tec glue. So that it stays long term. But the outside I will hot glue so it sticks right away. Alright, I've got a few things here that I can add. I have these leaves that are... I don't know, they're like a soft velvety stuff. I also have these um, faux plants, which will probably work a bit better than the flowers. Um, so my friend Kristen sent me these and uh, plants, don't they? But they're plastic, so that's pretty neat. So some succulents as well. Might actually use these. Uh, just taking those little heads off. Just use them all. Um, maybe not the blue, but definitely these colors. Nice. Just getting rid of these stems. Actually, don't know if I'm gonna use the the flowers, the leaves yet. These ones, because I'm kind of doubting that now. Because um, I might just want to do the moss and the uh, the succulents. So. What I need for this is a separate container and then a lot of PVA glue so I can just slap it on. So that's what I'm going to get first with this PVA school glue. I'm going to mix that in. We'll see if this is enough. Mix that with that popsicle stick. Just mixing that until I think this is nice and, you know, it's a nice consistency. It's nice and covered with the glue. Um, I might I might make more in a minute, but um, this is a good starting point. So I, I guess I'm just going to glue it all around the... Um, a circle here. So you can see how I'm applying it. It's very easy, just with a popsicle stick. Now, this takes a little bit of, uh, of time to dry, um, probably about two days before the glue is completely hardened and uh, finished. So I'm going to let this dry and then after about a day or two come back with what it looks like and then we can continue building this journal. So um, I'll probably leave that to the next video and then I'll, uh, I'll show you what it is looking like then. I hope you like this video and um, let me know if you like this kind of 
content and if you would like to see me journal in this journal as well um, it will just be about my daughter going to school and our personal experiences and my personal journal basically um, but it will be passed down eventually to my daughter so it's like a memory keepsake thing for her which i want to start now thanks so much for watching and i'll see you on the next next one bye bye